Every day on There's No Taste Like Home, Chef Gino DeCampo will take three family cooks and the recipes that have been passed down through their families from generation to generation, out of the home and into a professional kitchen. Come on, let's get cooking. Yes, yes, yes. Together, they'll serve up their treasured dishes to paying customers and the winning dish, judged by Gino, yes. will be added to the restaurant's menu for a month. Remember, this is your great-grandmother's recipes to prove that there is no taste like home. On today's show, a delicious working-class game pie that once fed a family of 13 children and has been passed down four generations. Always home cooking, nothing at all was bought, no fish fingers or frozen meals <laughs> or anything. An amazing Iraqi Jewish dish originally enjoyed on Shabbat or Holy Day. Saturday morning, an Iraqi Jewish household, uh, that's the dish you have for breakfast and a stunning seafood noodle recipe with heritage stretching back to the 13th century. I got taught this dish back in Singapore in my auntie's stall. Um, and then I've been practicing when I come home. Hi, I'm Gino DeCampo and welcome to There's No Taste at Home. Today, I'm in the home of the Scousers, Liverpool. This city has a great history with food and it can be traced back since 1190. And back then was known as Elpul. You know why? Because the River Mercy behind me was full of baby hills. When the Albert Docks were built in 1846, it opened up the city to the rest of the world. Exotic food started to pour in and the lucky Liverpoolian got to try food from the Far East and India. Well, 150 years later, the people of Liverpool, they will have the chance to try my three home cooked food, ready for service at lunch in this beautiful restaurant. They'll be serving up three wonderful dishes that have been in their families for generations. But how they will go down with paying customers? Well, let's get in there and meet today's cooks and prove one more time that there's no taste like home. Today's cooks are... Edie Pope, who is baking her grandma Tyra's rabbit and bacon pie served with seasonal vegetables. David Hackack, who is making his grandmother Farcher's sabich, a vegetarian meal of stuffed pitta, served with salad. And Perry NG, who is cooking his grandma Amma's hokey and me, prawn and squid fried noodles served with a topping of crispy shallots and sliced limes. So guys, welcome to Operational Kitchen. What do you think? Very good. Very brilliant. Yeah. It's nice. This is a bit different from uh, your kitchen, yeah. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Your recipes, I've seen them, okay? You've got a lot of preparation to do. So get on with it, look after each other, and I'm going to watch you. I'm going to watch you. Let's meet our first cook and find out about her special dish. Edie Pope is a 64-year-old farmer from Lydiate in Merseyside. She has six grown-up children. Her dish is Grandma Tyra's rabbit and bacon pie served with seasonal vegetables. Being from a family of busy farmers, this dish has been a staple meal in the Pope family for years because it simply looks after itself. This is Grandma Tyra's rabbit and bacon pie. I like cooking rabbit pie because it's something that you can prepare and put in the oven and leave it while I get on with other jobs on the farm. I've cut the rabbit into portions and I'm now going to bring it to the boil and cook it for about an hour or an hour and a quarter and you use the stock for the gravy for the rabbit pie. While the rabbit cooks, Edie gets on collecting today's eggs from her chickens. Right, I'm now taking the rabbit off the bones, ready to cut it up and put it into the pie. I'm frying the bacon because it makes it a better flavour in the pie, I think. I will just leave that to crisp a little bit. You cut up your shallots and mushrooms and fry those. I'm doing the pastry now for on top of the rabbit pie. Plain flour I'm using, lard and margarine. And you just mix that up until it resembles breadcrumbs. Mum said, you'll never be good at baking. Your hands are too big. But she did admit that she was wrong. Add some icy cold water until it binds together. Let that rest a little minute. This is the stock off the rabbit now, and I've added flour and some gravy browning. And I'm just going to pour this over the top 
of the rabbit, streaky bacon, mushroom and shallots. Next, we're going to roll out the pastry to cover the pie dish. This is my blackbird and you bake it in pie in the centre so that the steam rises and comes out the top and that stops your pastry from going soggy. These are the eggs that I've collected off the hens, off a couple of them this morning, and they were still warm when we brought them into the kitchen. And that's just ready for the oven. And now it's time to serve up. That's Edie's Grandma Tyra's rabbit and bacon pie served with seasonal vegetables, a dish that's steeped in rural England's heritage. So, Edie, what should I know about your recipe? It started with, in the late 1800s with Grandma Tyra, Louise Tyra, when she used to do it for her family because she had six children. Then she passed it down to Mum who had 13 children. Wow. And of course, living on a farm, rabbits were readily available and we could get the vegetables easily enough to, to put everything in. Um, when the rabbits arrived, it was my job to skin them and clean them and then join them into a dish and then mum took over from there. All was home cooking. Nothing at all was bought. No fish fingers or frozen meals <laughs> or anything. No, everything was home cooked. Mum, oh, what can you say? I know everyone says their mum's the best. My mum was the best. Very strict parents, both of them. Bed at seven o'clock, whether you liked it or not, but as she so rightly was proud to say, never a policeman knocked on our door. Three years ago, she died. She had 57 grandchildren and 68 great-grandchildren. Amazing woman. Yes, yes, absolutely. How do you feel of being in a professional kitchen? Because of course, you know, you always cooked at home, your family around, all of a sudden you're cooking with strangers in a kitchen yeah. that you don't know. We were used to cooking in volume. Friday night, you know, would be like six apple pies, six rhubarb pies if that was in, in season. No, it's a restaurant it, or something in your house. That is. But my children six, also six know. Six apple pies? Yes. Well, that, that's what you'd need for the weekend, you see, for the dessert. So, Indy, what would it mean to you and to your family and to the dish to win today and be on a restaurant menu? It would be lovely because we are arable farmers and it blends in with farming because we have all our own vegetables to be able to add to the dish and just to keep it going for generations to come, hopefully. As people are learning now to cook instead of all these uh, prepared meals, I think they will try things like So you're this. really doing it for your family but yes. also for all the farmers oh, out there? Yes, yes. Edie begins preparing her dish by jointing the rabbits and likely boiling them. She's already aware of the task that lies ahead. I've got an awful lot to do today, so time is very important. I like to be on time. So hopefully I can get the rabbits cooking and then prepare everything else. And once I know that sort of an hour to go, I know that I think will be right then. And it looks nice and it tastes nice. Come on, you're going to have to agree with me. What an amazing recipe we had so far. But join me next. I have two more cooks to meet with amazing family dishes. Coming up, two more tantalizing recipes, a very special Iraqi Jewish feast, and a seafood extravaganza that has traveled all the way from Singapore. How long for the five noodles? And service proves to be too much for one of our cooks. Come on, dodgy, come on, lime, 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 lime. Hey, a little bit panicky now. I haven't got a clue what's going on. 